Hey everybody, it's Jay Bear from Convince and Convert. I am joined today by a very special guest, uh, my friend and new author, second time author, Mike Stelzner from Social Media Examiner. You may be familiar with his unbelievably successful blog, socialmediaexaminer.com. Hey Mike, what's up? Jay, hey, things are going great. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely my pleasure. Tell us a little bit about your brand new book, Launch. It looks just like that. You can see how many pages that I have uh, that I have marked in the book. Tell us a little bit about it and uh, what people can take out of it. First, I love the sticky notes in there. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the book Launch is a book for a market for marketers that are tired of marketing not working. Uh, it's really all about helping businesses figure out how to create great content, work with experts outside of their maybe normal circles, and cage their marketing messages so that they can grow a massively loyal following who will love them and sing their praises from the hills and help them grow their business. Awesome. You, you talk in the book a lot about attracting leads and customers kind of without selling, right? Um, right. How do, you, how do you mean by that? Not, it seems almost counterintuitive, right, that, that you sell without right. selling. How does that work? Yeah, it's a very um, interesting concept. You got to step back for a second and acknowledge the fact that uh, prospects and customers are, are not trusting businesses today. Uh, Edelman Trust uh, Barometer showed only one in three people trust businesses. And if you think about it, the fact is that we as prospects and consumers are inundated with marketing everywhere we go, even in the bathroom stalls, Jay. Yeah. You can't yeah. get away from it. So I wonder if women have that. Do women have that in the in the women's bathrooms? Do they have the ads in there. I wonder. I know we do because we're standing up. But I wonder. I would guess. <laughs> that's a that's a blog post potentially. Yeah, there you go. But you know, the moral of the story is that people are ignoring advertisements. Uh, when you're on Facebook, you don't pay attention to those little ads. You don't pay attention to no on websites. So you know, as a marketer, what are you to do? How can you get people to pay attention? And what I found is by creating content, which is highly scalable, by the way, because obviously we all know that content can be viewed by tens or thousands of people and it has no definite uh, effort difference. Um, when you create great content and you strip the marketing messages from it, your content is received as, instead of a bait piece or something designed to get you to do something, it's designed as, you know, it's perceived as a gift. And what do people do when they come to an article that's got ads all around it and pop-ups and stuff? They completely ignore it. But if it's got nothing around it and it's got some social proof on it, like a couple hundred tweets or something like that, what they're going to do is they're going to read it. And the end result is this kind of content is shareable. And this is the key to everything, Jay. When people share your great content, they become miniature little salespeople for you, spreading to their communities links back to your content. And as long as you have a mechanism in place that enables people to get more of your great content, that's the way you grow leaves. That's the way you grow your business. So are you thinking then that, that companies who have actual sales departments, that they, they don't need sales departments? They don't need professional salespeople? Yeah, they can get rid of them all. No, of course not. <laughs> um, the trick is to have your own publication, your own platform. So if you think about right now, most marketers are reliant on paying someone else to get the message in front of the audience that they care about. That someone else can be a print magazine, radio show, television show, a website. But at the end of the day, if you own the platform upon which people come and they keep coming back more and more, and you have a mechanism like a Facebook page or a mechanism like a daily email broadcast where you can keep sending great content to those people, I call those secondary channels. Through those mechanisms, you can begin the process of selling and, and, and getting people into your funnel. And Social Media Examiner is a great example. I mean, I can share how we do it if you want, Jay. Yeah, it's, it's been an amazing success story over a remarkably short period of time. Um, talk a little bit about, about the numbers that you've seen in Social Media Examiner sort of burst on the scene and now right. um, a major, major uh, player in the social media world. Well, we're 20 months old, Social Media Examiner is. Um, we have 90,000 people that get emails six days a week in their inbox from us. We have a 25 to 30 percent daily open rate from those emails. Now, for six days a week, Jay, that is a spectacular yeah, email amazing. metric. In that email, we simply have a 70-word blurb for the day's article with a link if they want to keep reading it. And then underneath that email, we have an ad. And that ad is to, for example, our product, which is an event or it's a sponsored ad. 
And that's how we generate our revenue. In the first year of business, we generated $1.7 million following this model. We have no display advertising on our site. If we put any display advertising on our site, it's going to be for something free. For example, if we have an event coming up, we'll say click here to get a free class. So the idea, and even our ads and our newsletters are for free stuff. So it doesn't come across as an ad that's selling something. It comes across as an ad that's providing something free. So those two things coupled together make it so that people don't unsubscribe. We get about 300 subscribers a day. We get about 10 to 15 unsubscribes every day. Yeah, let me let me just jump on that for a second as a former email marketer myself and just just put a finer point on this, which is here you have um, one of the very largest social media-related blogs in the world, and where they make all their money is through email. So all these right. people out there who say email is dead, email doesn't make any sense, you are insane, right? Um, people... <laughs> Oh, email yeah. is be, still uh, email is still the best way to go. Absolutely, Facebook is the second best so far for us. Yeah, absolutely. The only the only challenge there is you know you gotta you gotta play in in uh, uh, in a world that you don't control. Absolutely, but 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 it's okay, believe it or not, on your Facebook page occasionally to promote stuff. Sure, we found that that works for us. You, you talk a lot about um, creating good content, right? That the secret to the whole thing um, in, in Social Media Examiner is, is the provision of good content. What, in your opinion, sort of makes content good? Well, content that's good in your eyes may not be the same in someone else's eyes. So the key is to understand what matters to your prospects. In order to do that, you need to know what they care about. So if you're selling a widget, you know that they're not necessarily interested in buying your widget, but they might be interested in some other things. So you have to ask them, what are the topics that you're most interested in. What do you want to most learn about? At Social Media Examiner, we do an annual survey, and the first question is, what's the biggest social media question you want answered? Open-ended. And that is um, basically a goldmine for us that helps us put together an editorial calendar. And then on top of that, once you know what people are interested in, then the key is to give it to them for free. Um, we, don't, we don't do small 200, 400-word posts. We don't chase the news, although that's valuable for some people. Instead, we provide rich, detailed how-to articles written by experts like yourself, Jay. So, so the key at the end of the day is we every article that we publish, we gauge how popular it is. And then we decide if we want to do more or less of those kinds of articles. But they tend to be very rich. They tend to be how-to articles. They tend to be success stories of other businesses so people can see how others have done it. They love that kind of stuff. Um, they tend to be expert interviews. We go to a trade show with a camera crew and we interview all the top experts in our industry. People love hearing from book authors. They love hearing from people that are you know, working at organizations that are successful and that's the kind of content that goes crazy. And I postulate in the book that that's the kind of content any business could use to grow their business in any niche. Absolutely. I, I, I completely agree and I think you've really done a nice job of sort of figuring out what your audience wants and then just going deep in that particular category. It's very, very smart. Um, but you know, there's a lot of talk about content and content creation and, and, and a lot of companies are thinking of themselves and, and rightfully so as publishers now, but, but content alone doesn't, doesn't work, right? I mean, it doesn't, you know, you can't just let's write some stuff and, and the world will beat a path to our door. That's why right. the part of launch that I really, really like the most. And I think what really separates it, um, from the pack of other books in the industry is its focus on people. Right. Um, that you really believe and espouse and live the principle um, that great, pe great people is what makes content great. Um, and, and in fact, most of the content on your site isn't created by people that you employ. Uh, right. It's created by people who, who you try and build up um, by giving them a platform on your site. Can you talk about that a little bit, the importance of people? Yeah, well, the moral of the story is um, it's not just important to write content to people that, to create content that people love. It's important to embrace people that might be considered competition. Um, I call these people outside experts. There are, in your industry, people that are really smart. And when we first launched Social Media Examiner, we tried to identify who those smart people were, and we went and we interviewed as many of them as possible. Because here's a couple things to think about. When you shine the spotlight on someone else instead of on yourself, um, it changes what you're doing almost into a movement. In the case of Social Media Examiner, because we had no advertising, it was almost like we were a movement because we were shining the spotlight on all these people, Chris Brogan, Richard Chalihandra is the CEO of Technorati, and all these other people that were doing great things. When you do that, you transform yourself from how can I get something to you to how can I help you. 
And, and these experts have this amazing knowledge inside their brain. All you got to do is tap it. And when you tap it and you share it with your audience, it's A, a form of great content, but B, some of those people, Jay, as you know, will become strategic partners. They'll ally, ally, you know, build a strong alliance with you as you and I have become strong alliance partners, if you will. And, and, and that's what most people don't figure out. They think that they can just do it all themselves, but they don't realize in the social world it's all about building relationships and it's about people helping out people. And if you can figure out how to just have a mechanism in place where you are constantly identifying up-and-coming people, not just super successful people, um, but people that are really, really smart, and if you, you can regularly share their knowledge with your audience, some of those people are going to rise up. Some of those people are going to be the next Guy Kawasaki's and the next Seth Godin's. And when you build strong relationships with them and share that great knowledge, they're going to help grow your business. So at the very least, they're going to point to the great content you're producing with them. Do you think that can work for for a mainstream company that, that's not sort of in the in the world that you and I are in? Can, can that same approach work for some B two B company that sells you know high dollar life insurance policies or what have you? Well, I'll give you two examples. Citrix, um, Citrix yeah. did uh, work shifting with yeah. Chris. Great example. And uh, Procter and Gamble did Man of the House. Now Procter and Gamble went to a bunch of dad bloggers and they built Man of the House, which has got over a million page views a month, and they're less than a year old. So, and Procter and Gamble didn't use any of their marketing muscle. It was a completely like a small project that they did, just relying on the power of dad bloggers. So, yeah, I think you can do it. As a matter of fact, you just have to. The key to doing something like this is to make sure there's something in it for everyone, and you have to figure out what do these experts want. Book authors, if they got a brand new book out, what do they want? They want exposure for their book. Some people want money. So, you know, if you're if you're a big enough organization where you can afford to pay some people uh, for their opportunity to be involved, like I would not be surprised if Chris Brogan was compensated by Citrix uh, for being part of Work Shifting, which was uh, a website that was a B2B website designed for the... I think Citrix was a client of theirs, actually. Yeah, okay, right. So, but Citrix owns work shifting, and Chris Brogan ended up there. You go. So, some, somehow, Brogan was involved and had a financial gain. So, you know, you have to figure out what it is that the people want, and 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 you can't just go to someone out of the blue and say, "Hey, come write for my website," which is what so many people get wrong. You have to start by maybe giving gifts to them without expecting anything in return. Yeah, I mean so, that's a really so, interesting. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. I was going to ask you about that in a second. This idea that that you don't look at it as a quid pro quo. Right, no. you you really talk a lot in the book about this notion of giving gifts and just just taking the first step and saying, you know what, I'm going to do something for this person. If it doesn't pay off, it doesn't pay off, but it might, uh, and the chances of it paying off are better if it's not a direct. You do this for me, I do this for you. Okay. That it seems so it seems so counterintuitive, and I know it's definitely counterintuitive for big companies who are like, why would I possibly do this unless I know it's going to return? Because it's just not how they've been trained in business school. Well, Cialdini wrote in the book Influence about the rule of reciprocity. He talked about, you know, if you do something for someone, they'll have this innate desire to return favor. I think so many marketers have abused that, and they've got this give-to-get mentality that if I do something for you, I expect you're going to do something. You even see it on Twitter. People retweet your stuff, and then they get mad that you don't retweet their stuff. Right. Um, well, let's think about what are relationships all really about. Let's t make it personal. Jay, if your, one of your kids got you a gift, um, would you expect that you would have to return a gift to them? Have you ever been to a wedding sponsored by Nike? <laughs> have you ever opened a present and had to watch a 30-second commercial before you got a gift? These things are ludicrous in a social context. Why is it that we feel like in the world of business, social doesn't matter? Relationships still matter. If you are generally a nice person, if your company has um, gone out of their way to help people, then I guarantee you some of those people are going to say, I just love this company. I love what they're doing. I'm going to share it with my friends, even if I'm not interested in their product. What does that do? That brings more people back, and the end result is you get lifted up and you grow, and some of those people will help you. But you know what? If you expect that they're going to, then you got it all wrong. At Social Media Examiner, I don't expect anything. That's part of the reason why I think we've grown as fast as we have, and we've got crazy, raving, loyal fans Jay, I got an email from somebody out of Canada that said, Mike, if you have someone up in Vancouver that you would like to give a, a free ticket to one of your events, I will hand deliver it to their door with a Starbucks coffee, and if it's a woman, I will give this person a bouquet of flowers. I will dedicate an entire day of my life to you. That's how much I appreciate what you've done for me. 
That's Amazing. the kind of stuff you See, want. See, you heard it here. You heard it here. Nice guys can finish first. So if you are um, uh, <laughs> one of those people out there that believes that um, that social media and SEO and all these things uh, require you to be edgy and mean and controversial, uh, Mike and Launch are here to tell you that uh, that, that you are wrong. That you, you can still be a good guy and uh, and get ahead in this business, and Mike's uh, evidence of that. Thanks. One of the things that that kind of made me think, just because of the industry that I'm in, you mentioned um, in the book that, that you know or believed when you started Social Media Examiner that you had a three to five year sort of window for, for that business. Do you, do you still believe that? I mean, do you think that Social Media Examiner and Social Media Advice has a shelf life? I think about things like, you know, Search Engine Watch, which have been around for over a decade and are still going strong. Uh, I'm, I'm not so sure I agree with you that, that there won't be interest in social media down the road because it changes so fast and it's so endlessly complicated. I'm not suggesting that um, – when I said that in the book, I'm not suggesting that uh, three to five years social media won't be important. But having having been – But you'll just be retired living in Barbados? I understand. I understand. No, how it's having been branded the from. king of white papers once by a lot of people, I, I saw how things rise and how things fade. And I just knew that in 2006, white papers were at their peak. Now, they're still important, but they aren't what everyone's talking about. Yeah. And what I, just having been around long enough, you know, 15 years doing this, I just know that, um, you know, five to ten, three to five years from now, it may be a different phrase. It may be a different focus. It may be a mobile focus. So um, I knew that, uh, and I also know that um, there's just no way that something can remain top of the game forever. Yeah. So that's what I, you know, I expect three to five years. I mean, I'm two years into it almost. I, I, I'm leaning more towards the five years right now than the three years. I'm putting sure. all my money on telepathy. That's where it's going to go. It's going to be <laughs> huge. Huge potential. All of it on telepathy. Hey, all right. You heard it here. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I just wanted to say before we wrap up, thank you very much for the nice things you said about me in the book. That was, that was very kind of you, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to work with you uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, what do you got cooking? What's the, what's the next event for you and Social Media Examiner? What's, uh, what's going on? Well, first of all, Jay, um, right back at you. You are spectacular. I saw the amazing talent in you, and I, you continue to impress me. You're, you're one guy that truly gets content, so congratulations to you. Thanks. Uh, what comes next for me is a lot more of what we've been doing. Um, Facebook Success Summit is coming up in the fall, and you're presenting at that event. Um, who knows? Maybe there'll be a Google Plus event coming in the future. Oh, it's too early to tell. <laughs> yeah, it'll happen, I imagine. Good. Yeah. When is uh, when is Facebook Success Summit? When should people Facebook start signing up? Success Summit is coming in October, and we're going to be launching the um, officially opening the doors for people to get tickets to that event coming uh, in just a couple weeks. Great. Great. Well, thanks very much for your time, folks. If you haven't had a chance to pick up Mike's book, it's flying off the shelves. It's doing great. Uh, it's called uh, Launch. It looks like that. Also looks like the one behind it. Look at that. Look at that. Flying off the shelf. That's the final. <laughs> that's the final flight of the space shuttle right there. Um, there you go. <laughs> pick it up. You'll love it. If you if you liked um, uh, if you like my book, if you like content rules, anything in sort of that genre, you will absolutely adore this book. Uh, grab it. You'll uh, you'll appreciate it. Mike, thanks so much as always. I appreciate it and congratulations. Okay, thank you. 